again, welcome. My name is Alicia, and I'm a family support specialist from Ask Resource Center. Um, I'm very excited to be here hosting this webinar today. Um, the session is titled Achieve, the new database system for IEPs and IFSPs. Uh, we have two wonderful presenters here today from the Iowa Department of Education, um, Amy Alfrey and Dee Gethman. And so I'll share just a little bit about them before we get started. Amy is from the Iowa Department of Education and has 25 years of teaching experience and five years of administrative experience supporting individuals with disabilities. She has been an education program consultant with the Iowa Department of Education for the past six years. And one of her big projects that she works on is um, she oversees project management for the development of Iowa's statewide special education data system, which we're here to learn about today, uh, called Achieve. And then Dee is our uh, second partner that we're collaborating with here today, who is also at the Iowa Department of Education. She has served as Iowa's 619 coordinator for over 25 years and has recently become Iowa's Part C coordinator with the Iowa Department of Education. So I'd like to offer a warm welcome to both of um, these individuals and I will let them go ahead and begin their presentation. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Alicia. Um, okay, hello everybody. Um, we are so glad you're here to join us. Um, I'm gonna begin to share my screen um, to show our slide deck that, um, like Alicia said, will be sent out to you um, after our presentation today. So you'll have it available as well. Okay. Um, well, this is just, you know, just a cover slide to kind of indicate that we are here today to talk with you about Achieve and um, more specifically the Achieve Family Portal. And so here's our learning objectives um, for the day for our little hour together right now. We are hoping that um, participants will gain an understanding of Achieve, um, the new early access and special education statewide system, and also learn about the Achieve Family Portal, the Family Portal, which will be available to families in the very near future. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get going today. Uh, so just to begin with here, I wanted to share with you, this is the, if you haven't seen it before um, on my screen, this is the logo um, for Achieve and for the Achieve Family Portal. And so it is the letter A um, standing for Achieve wrapped across the state of Iowa with this blue line trending up. And that is a very intentional line of like thinking about our, um, ultimately what we want, right, is for our children and learners to all have better outcomes for um, across the state. And so that is literally across the state, a trend line moving up in the direction of improvement. So that's kind of a little bit of background about the logo. Um, we get asked quite often whether ACHIEVE actually stands for anything, if it's an acronym or not, because it's... Um, it's viewed in capital letters quite often. And we just want you to know that it's not. For once, it's not an acronym in special education. ACHIEVE is just meant to be, it's just the name of our system. And it is really um, selected because that is what we all want to do is succeed and achieve. Uh, so just a reminder that as you see ACHIEVE, um, part of the logo is um, these letters, IDEA. Now that is um, an acronym, which stands for the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which is what all of our special education um, principles, foundations, and certainly ACHIEVE has been um, based on and built on. And so that's, that is what you know, governs sort of all of our work in providing for individuals with disabilities. A little more terminology, just to be sure that we're all on the same page. I want to share with you that um, you might hear Dee or myself um, speak about early access. Um, and when we say early access, we are meaning those um, children who are birthed to, to age three and the services that um, they are afforded um, by being an eligible individual. And so um, early access is birth to three. Special education, when we talk about that, we're really talking about, sometimes we say school age, um, but meaning special education services for learners who are age three to age 21, um, when they would um, then age out of services. Um, 
Although we know that even beyond age 21, sometimes through sort of like our Transitional Alliance program and Voc Rehab, there are additional services that continue until age 25. But for the purposes of ACHIEVE, we're really talking primarily around 3 to 21. When you hear us say the words IFSP, that stands for Individualized Family Service Plan. And that is that individualized plan that teams develop um, for those children who are birth to three. And when we say IEP, that um, is in reference to the individualized education program that is developed for anybody who is age three to 21. Okay, so that's just some common terminology that you may hear us um, say. Uh, and we wanna just make sure that everybody's on the same page as us with that as, as you might hear those things today. So moving into this, like, well, what is a chief? What, what is this system that you guys keep talking about? We're not sure that we, we, we are guessing that some of our participants have some pretty in-depth knowledge and maybe already have, have had some experience um, in having a, a family meeting, an IEP meeting or an IFSP meeting, um, you know, that was developed through Achieve and others maybe don't have any idea yet at all what it is. And so we just want to take a few minutes today to talk with you about really what it is and where it came from. So as you're probably already familiar with, we've had a statewide system since 2005. And um, our legacy system um, that's been around for a while, at the time in 2005 when it was developed, it was really cutting edge, right? Like it was really something for us to have this new statewide system. However, um, like technology does, it ages itself out very quickly because things are always progressing. And so um, our, what was cutting edge technology was pretty quickly becoming extinct, <laughs> which is our uh, little picture of the dinosaur there um, in, the, in the lower left-hand corner. And so we had a real statewide need to develop a new system that could maximize all those advances in technology and be able to better assist teams in really truly designing services and supports that are really individualized based on the child or learner's needs. We needed a system that um, could really maximize all of the functionality to support practices and potentially minimize that time on paperwork so that we could increase the time on actual services and supports. We wanted to be able to increase opportunities for more team collaboration and communication. Um, a more mutual understanding of, of what's being um, put into these plans for both um, children who are on IFSPs and IEPs. We definitely wanted to increase parent and family engagement um, throughout the development of our new system, as well as use that system to make sure that we are being compliant with what the federal regulations are and to ensure sort of like um, fail safes to make sure that we don't, don't have any like accidental gotchas in not being able to be compliant. So we've tried to build the system knowing what is required for compliance and making sure that we have those components built into the system. And then of course, we're really excited that one of the things that we've been able to pull off in this um, development of Achieve is we are the first in the nation to have a one system for um, learners birth to age 21 under one roof, under one system with seamless sorts of transition components built in. Um, Dee's gonna talk a little bit more about that in a little bit, but just that we're pretty proud that Iowa is on the map as the first state in the nation to have a comprehensive birth to 21 system. Linked on this slide that again, you'll have access to later at the bottom here is, um, a link to our Achieve public Google site. And so I'm gonna take you there so that if you wanna learn a little bit more about what Achieve entails and be able to track some of our kind of progress along the way, um, you can go to this Google site. So my screen changed over here to, this is the landing page for the Google site. And you can see that there's a little more information here about what is Iowa Achieve and really some of the foundations that it was built on, including Iowa's specially designed instruction framework that's linked there, and you could take a look at that. So um, again, there's some more information here about just sort of what does this mean for me uh, about what Achieve is, and you can, can read that on your own. Um, and then here are some of the additional features that I was kind of alluding to on that slide before that really went into the work of the development 
and now into our implementation of our, our brand new system. And that is really thinking about how we integrated with other existing data systems to um, offer for the first time ever a family portal into all of the IDEA processes. We'll talk lots more about that in a few minutes. And being able to um, you know, be just super user-friendly and have a lot of flexible navigation to it, making sure that we are meeting all of those accountability requirements. Um, and you know, streamlining different things. For example, um, our early access process of being able to um, have um, a public referral system to be able to have children be referred to receive um, potential services. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go as well. Up here at the top on this um, navigation pane, you can see that I'm going to move from the overview page over to achieve in action. And on this page of the public Google site, it helps you see what's been going on um, in Achieve since the time that we launched in um, back in April. And so since April of last year, we have um, really had a lot of things happening. You can see that actually 65,000 meetings have been held and documented in Achieve. We've had um, 7,855 referrals for children who potentially need early access services, which is huge. Because of that, again, public referral site and us being able to um, make sure that anybody who sees a need for a child has a, a way to report that has been a really big benefit for our state already. You can see that there's been almost 2,500 IFSPs or Individualized Family Service Plans developed and achieved, as well as 36,846 IEPs. So lots of action happening um, already in this, in this new database system. Down below here, as I scroll down this page, I'm just gonna leave it on my screen for a few minutes, are some testimonials, including um, testimonials from um, this bottom one is from a family member, got one from a special education director and a variety of users of the system. And so you can see what people are saying about their experience um, so far in Achieve. So that's there for you to um, read. And, you know, we welcome comments and testimonials from anyone. And so um, feel free at any time, if you have had some experience with Achieve and you want to share your experience with us, um, my email is amy.elfrey at iowa.gov. We can share that a different way too, um, you know, through Ask Resource Center, but feel free to send us any of that, those comments that you want to. We, we welcome your feedback. At the bottom, there's also just some pictures um, of some of our users across the state as they were beginning um, to implement Achieve for the, the, in, the, in the beginning. Um, so that's, those are just some fun ones. There's some pictures of some children and families as well. And then the last page I want to show you from this Google site is this Achieve Resources tab. And so I'm going to, again, up here at the top, I'm going to navigate over to the Resources page. And I just want you to know that there's a couple other things here that might be useful to you. Um, one of them is to watch the video about what the early access referral public site is all about and how to use it. And so feel free to take a look at that if that's interesting to you, um, or if you want to see more about how we do have this opportunity to refer our youngest children so we get nice early interventions in place um, for children who need that. So take a look at that video if you want to. Another thing that's interesting is um, the Achieve infographic. And that opens up this one pager that is uh, a little more about the things that I was already telling you about of what really is Iowa Achieve and what are those system features that were built into it. So that's a one page sort of infographic that you can print or take a look at if, if you want um, a little more information or if you wanted to share information with others. So again, back here to the PowerPoint, that Achieve Google site is linked here on the slide deck that will be sent out along with the recording. So that'll be available to you. Um, and you can just kind of explore that site on your own as well to learn a little bit more about really what is Achieve and, and, and um, look for additional resources on that resource page to be coming. Because as we have other webinars or um, other information that we wanna share globally with the field, that is a place that we will locate those resources for you. Okay, 
So then that kind of tells you a little more about just what has achieved this system that we built in order to have those um, individualized family service plans and um, those individualized education programs. But now what does it mean? What is the family portal part? What is that going to look like? Um, it is not yet available because it is in um, still in the um, further along in the conceptual stages, but still in the development stages. And so we're going to talk to you a little bit about what is being developed and, and what you can expect from that today. So let's start with really what is the family portal? And so um, on this first part of the slide, I've got some things to help you understand that what it really provides is real-time access to your child's records. Um, and so that includes, and this is not an all-inclusive list, but um, and it, that would include things like draft plans that are being developed that the team um, shares with you via the portal. So you can take a look at them prior to coming to a meeting um, to review them. And um, by having it available in the portal, it's available to you really at any time that you want to access them. It's also would ha have you have access to any of the finalized plans or any of the documents associated with your child's file. So like you wanna look back at a meeting notice, you wanna look at um, a consent form that has been um, signed, you wanna look at a prior written notice from a meeting or two ago or the most recent one. You want to look at an IEP from, um, you know, the, the most current IEP for, and you want to look at IEPs over time. You'll be able to do all of that in the documentation section, which we're going to talk about a little bit more here soon um, on the family portal. Okay, it also gives families access to progress monitoring data as it is entered into the system. So the minute that your service provider um, is entering that information about how progress is um, going on an outcome or a goal, you as a family member will be able to see that and um, have access to that data. It's also really a nice repository, um, which I'm gonna show you in a couple screens here, of just all of the records and how you can not have to try to maybe keep track of them all in a giant filing drawer, right? You'll be able to have sort of this electronic repository of all your records um, for your learner. And so for your child, at any time that you want to go in and download or um, print or look at your child's records, you'll be able to have instant access to that rather than waiting maybe, um, you know, you've always, always would have the right to have access to that information, but sometimes it gets caught up in you making a request and then having to wait for the team to get it for you. And then, you know, if you're waiting for snail mail for it to eventually get to you. So this takes away some of that waiting period and gives you that access to your records right away. Dee's gonna talk a little bit more about that in, in just a couple slides. The other thing that a, the Achieve Family Portal includes is a calendar in it of all of the upcoming dates um, and meetings that you've been invited to for your child. And so like if there's certain um, due dates, like when a review is due or a three-year reevaluation or when a meeting has been scheduled, there's going to be a calendar of those events for you on your landing page in Achieve, which I'll show you in a few minutes. So those are just some of the things to expect, and Dee's going to talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, but something, so a couple other things I want to share with you about what it really isn't. And so now on the right-hand side um, of my screen, you can see that one of the first things I want to point out is that the portal is not required. Okay, so if as a family member you choose not to use the portal, that does not take away any of your rights as a family member or a parent to still have access to all of that information around for your child. Okay, you can still get it in ways that we have always done it before we had a family portal, which is requesting records from the AEA or from the um, school team and being able to still or from your service coordinator and still being able to um, always have access to those records. So it's not required that you use the portal. It's just as Dee's gonna point out in a little bit, gives you some advantage as far as the access um, to that information. Like if you wanna access at midnight, you can, right? Because you've got, you've got control over that. Um, but it is by no means a requirement to be in the family portal. You will still be as much of an active participant in your child's education plan as you would be if you weren't in the portal. The other thing I want to point out is that it's not necessarily what we would call interactive. So although there are options 
for the family to take some actions. You can do some things like, for an example, if you elect to um, choose this option, you can sign things electronically via the portal. So you can say, yeah, please send that to me in my portal. And um, if you're a person that's got the right permissions to sign for the child, right, you definitely have to um, be an authorized user for that child. But if you um, have that capability, you can choose to sign things in the portal. Um, but it is primarily a portal or a portal to, a, a way to look in and view things not necessarily a way to directly edit the contents you're seeing. So in other words, is even though you can see draft um, IEPs or IFSPs, you wouldn't necessarily be able to type anything on that or make a comment. It's not like a Google Doc, okay? I just wanna make that clear that you're not necessarily adding to the documents you're seeing as much as you have that ability to view them and you know, take your own notes and have um, you know time to think about and process them so that again, when we all come together at the, the table as a team and we're developing those plans that we can have more meaningful conversations, okay? So with that, uh, I wanna take, I wanna apologize ahead of time for the screenshot you're seeing that it, if you're zooming in to look because you feel like your eyes might be blurry. Um, and my screenshot's a little blurry and I tried to get the best one I could and I just couldn't get it um, to be any more clear than this, but I think that the, it still gives you the gist of the idea of what the family portal dashboard will look like. So um, in this top section, uh, this first box up here at the top, it when you land on your landing page in Achieve, of course, you're going to see Welcome to Achieve there at the top. And then um, the first thing is going to be your recent documents section. So it's going to have anything that just has recently come in for you at the top, okay? So that you don't have to like sift and sort and wonder where those documents are. Anything that you haven't like cleared the alert on or taken the action on that is expected will still remain there in your recent documents until you do something with it. Okay, so it's a nice way for you to get to what you need right away. And so you might not be able to see these headings super clearly, but it's really like what the document is, what the description is of, of what you're seeing. And then it has the date and then it has the learner name. And the reason it has the learner name is that if you are a family that has more than one child in Achieve, so you might have somebody that you might have a child that's getting um, early access services as well as a child getting special education services or more than one child getting either. Um, you don't have to have different landing pages for every one of your children that they, they will all be here on your landing page and you can select which learner you want to interact with without having to log in and log out for different learners. So that's kind of nice if those of you who have children across different schools and you might be logging into a student information system like Infinite Campus or Power School and stuff like that, and you might have to go to different ones for different children, that won't be the case for Achieve. Because this next section down, the second box on the screen says, my family. And so this is where if you had more than one um, child that was in Achieve that you are the family member for, they would appear here. And then that way you could go to that child's landing page at a click like at an instant click, you could get to the correct learner that you wanted to be looking at. And then here's that um, snippet of the calendar that I was referencing a little bit before that you would be able to um, change whether you see it by um, week or by month or by day. And um, it would have all of the upcoming due dates for your child or children. And it would have any meetings that you've been um, invited to. And when you click on the meeting in the calendar, it will open additional details. Um, and so like, if you can't remember where you put the meeting notice, um, all of that information that's on your meeting notice is actually stored in the calendar. And it tells you like, who's gonna be there, who's been invited to be there, um, where it is, what time it is, all of those sort of details open up as you click on any of that on the, um, on the screen here on, on your dashboard. So that's the, oops, I'm sorry, clicked the wrong button there. So you're going to be able to land here and at a glance, be able to get right to what you need um, with, with very few clicks. 
It is being designed to be um, compatible with mobile devices, and Dee's going to talk a little bit more about that too. So you don't have to be at your laptop in order to access this information. I'm going to show you one more screen. Now, note that there's a lot of busy stuff happening here on this screen. So um, the red and purple are annotations trying to show you that you've got some options as a family member. Those will not be on your busy screen. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through these a little bit. What we're viewing here is for each learner that's in Achieve, there is a documents section. Okay, as part of your their learner management page. And so as a family member for each of your children that you haven't achieved, there would be this document section. And you can see that pretty quickly, we know that there's a lot of documents, right, involved with early access and special education services. So we wanted to make it very easy to find what you need when you need it. So there's a lot of filter options. So this very top red annotation is telling you that it's, even though there's a lot of documents stored here, it's easy to find them using all kinds of options to sort and filter. You can just say, I want just to see the ones that came in today or the last seven days or the last 30 or the last 90. So there's a lot of ways to filter out so you don't have to look at them all at one time. You can also click on the title and sort them by that as well. You can, um, anything that is linked here is a actual document, an actual PDF document that you could print or download. And so just clicking on it opens it right up on, in another window right on your screen. And so you would be able to very quickly um, have access to the documents that you're looking for. If you see that, if you can notice here that there's an eyeball next to a meeting notice, you can at a glance, click on that eyeball and you'd be able to view the participants that um, were at that meeting. Okay, and so if there's not an eyeball, it might be that the meeting had not been held yet. Okay, um, but you can see on these ones that say meeting held, you can very quickly take a look at who the participants were at that meeting. It's just another, there's some little other added features like that of being able to um, view these documents. You can notice that this is quite a list, right? A lot over time, the documents do build. And so like it becomes what I was talking about, that repository for that information. And so um, you're not going to have to wonder like, where's the last IEP? I want to compare, you know, this year's plan, either IFSP or IEP to the previous one. And so you'd be able to access all of those in this documentation section. So it's a really nice place for families to be able to organize and keep track of all of the various documents that are related to um, early access or special education services. Okay, so those are sneak peeks that that dashboard screen I just showed you and now this documentation section. Those are just some sneak peeks into what you can expect when we get into Achieve. That's not all, right? Because we talked about that you'd still be able to see progress monitoring and you'd be able to see, you know, some other data and information for your learner. And so um, some of those screens are not yet fully developed. And so we don't have those to share with you yet. So I just wanted to give you um, a sneak peek into these screens so that you could sort of get a better feel for what to expect. And now I'm going to toss it over to Dee, and she's going to give us a little bit more information about, like, why? Why achieve? Well, thank you, Amy. I, 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 I get to uh, really tell you about why um, achieve was, we see achieve as an asset for Iowa's families, uh, Iowa's children, and our youth. Uh, in, in early intervention, as well as in special education services. We built Achieve on the belief that seeking information from team members in order to prepare for developing, reviewing, um, revising an IFSP or, as, or an IEP really does set the stage for meaningful participation and, and helps everyone be informed in terms of decision-making in the development and the review of that IFSP and IEP. It really, we feel like, leads to that informed decision-making and the individualized um, nature of, of our services. The other asset we believe is it really, as Amy described, you will be able to see the accomplishments and progress as well as struggles on how um, your, your child or your youth are achieving those IFSP outcomes and IEP goals. 
So we feel like that that would be available for you, as Amy described, um, to just to look at day to day, to week to week, month to month of how um, those interventions and instructional strategies that you discuss during those meetings of the IFSP and IEP development, how that's proceeding, how that's coming along, which really does lead to uh, providing that focus on that partnership and that it really does support um, all of our learning uh, to be able to learn as a team. The other aspect that we feel like, as Amy described, this is a birth to 21 system. And so we really wanted to make sure that Achieve prepared everyone for a smooth and seamless transition and preparing to put the supports that were in place or that need to be in place for those times when transitions may be bumpy, maybe um, a little anticipatory, um, nervous, uh, or anxiety provoking, that we want to make sure that that's seamless and, and everyone is really on the same page. So when, for example, someone, a, a child and family are leaving early access, you will be able to really look at this system within that context or from preschool to kindergarten, as well as those youth that are approaching 14 years of age, that we really built a system that supports uh, seamless transitions for families and educators across uh, birth to 21. The next um, aspect I really wanted to share with you is why will achieve the family portal be an asset for Iowa's families, children, and youth? So um, we designed it again for ease of access to your IFSPs, your IEPs, to, as Amy shared with you on that snippet where you can access evaluation reports, you can access meeting invites, um, and a variety of different information, it will be accessible um, to view those plans. And we'll provide you uh, families with the option to choose how to access the information. Um, that might be through the, the portal, through, this is a web-based online system. Um, it's, it is a static versus a dynamic, but you really are able to access information and make it available at any time, anywhere. Um, and for those that are involved with the, the child and family, then you will be able to access that information. The other point of access is really thinking about it in relationship to um, our translation services for people who need information in languages other than English. And so we have been working with our vendor and um, to be able to create uh, a system where we will be able to translate written documents and information into other languages. And then the last but uh, very important, we are approaching Achieve in the family portal to ensure that we protect confidentiality of personally identifiable information. We are under, we are very much aware of the information that this contains um, is uh, personally identifiable and it, it is valuable information, but also needs to be protected. And so we are working diligently to make sure that we have um, that securely in place. Okay. I will hand that, I, I'm excited to talk about the why and, and I hope you hear our energy and our enthusiasm as we, um, as Amy and I share uh, how, how Achieve has really come together. Now, Amy will share more about, more of the how and the when things will come together in, in the future. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, Dee. So I'm sure what everybody's really wondering, right, <laughs> now that you've seen, especially some little um, teasers, if you will, about um, what to expect. I'm sure you're like, when, when can we start getting in the portal? And so um, I want to share with you that, like we've said, the how um, families will access the um, portal, though, just be varied ways for families to um, be able to get into the portal and to be invited into the portal. Um, and so more on that will be shared um, as we get a little bit closer um, to launching. And so 
there will be a lot of different opportunities for families to um, have resources and engage in learning opportunities. And, um, you know, we expect to have like, you know, some videos to help people learn how to navigate in the various ways that you can navigate. And we expect to have um, like some sort of quick tip sheets that are like, you know, help you um, to navigate the system. And so all of that is in the works right now. Um, and as far as like, when will this family portal be available? When will we um, be able to actually start using it? And um, unfortunately, I can't share with you a designated date for that yet because it really is going to be contingent on our testing. And so um, what I can tell you is that the testing and training materials are currently in development. And we are about to embark on some very intensive testing of um, the family portal screens that will include um, family members for sure in the testing process. We've, we've got um, family members identified as well as agency team members um, to help us test thoroughly to make sure that the screens work um, the way that they are intended to. And so if that testing goes really well, then um, you know the, the portal may be available um, you know, sooner. And if that testing isn't so great, if we have a lot of feedback that says, mm, it's good, but these things are, were tripping me up, or this didn't work quite right, or there's a variety of things that can happen in testing. And so um, depending on the results of that testing and what kinds of improvements we need to make after testing, that that's going to um, you know, impact our delivery of the portal um, and, and have it ready for full implementation statewide. The other thing that really has to happen after testing is complete, right? And, and, and we say, yes, this is operating the way we want it. Then we need to develop those final training materials. We can't really develop training materials um, until the screens are for sure exactly the way they're going to be because we want screenshots and videos and things to represent exactly how it looks. And so some of the training materials can't be developed until all of the testing is completely finalized so that we can take those screenshots and videos from the finalized screens. So that's a long way to get to saying that the launch date for the portal is not yet determined. Um, because it, it, it hinges on a lot of different factors. What we can say is it is well in the works and we are um, underway um, with that beginning stages of testing and refinement. And there will definitely be um, more and more information coming your way soon. We expect to partner all along the way here with Ask Resource Center um, and other agencies, but to help get that information out to you so that you can know when you can expect it to come. And so many of our um, partners from Ask Resource Center are um, involved in some of this development and testing work. And so they're going to have information that we can share at a, a, a future webinar similar to this or um, you know, via other methods as well. And so just know that um, we're well underway and it is coming and we will, as soon as we know better what that timeline is, um, we will share that information. We also look to put more information on that Google, the public Google site that I was sharing earlier as we get into more of the family portal work and um, have resources available about the portal, they will, we expect for some of them to be housed there for you to access, okay? So with that, that concludes our slide deck. And um, I will toss it back to Alicia, to see if there's any questions for us. All right, well, thank you again, Dee and Amy, for joining us today and for providing information on this exciting thing that is to come. Um, we did have a few questions. Um, I would also like to encourage uh, those who are on the webinar, if things are coming to mind right now, go ahead and feel free to still add them to the chat. Uh, let's look. Um, the first question was, will the calendar link to the individual's personal calendar? I can't remember if that was addressed or not. So we can answer that one. <laughs> um, it's not the answer probably everyone loves. At this time, um, the Achieve calendar does not sync with like Google Cal or iCal or whatever. So it it is just its own calendar within Achieve um, that has those dates and stuff on it. It doesn't at this time have the capability to sync. Our 
um, educational users would love that as well, as would I. Um, mm -hmm. But at that at this time, we don't have that capability. Okay. Thank you. Um, another question we had come in from a parent is um, she, she references the old progress monitoring logs that were typically included along with the graph. And so she is asking, does the new system have a similar document or page to see raw data? Yeah, it does. In fact, um, Achieve has a, a very similar um, process for being able to generate a progress report um, as we had in our legacy system. Um, I find it a little more user-friendly. Now, some of you may have been involved in some meetings prior to maybe the last 30 to 60 days um, or had conferences and the team may have said that they uh, that those progress reports weren't yet available and that would have been true. And so that's a more recent development that has been released. So it is available now though. And teams, so if you want to ask for a progress report um, or updated um, pages of the, the, the goals and the progress monitoring data, that is all available to be printed or downloaded or sent by a, a PDF now out of Achieve. There was a time from really the beginning of the school year up until really, you know, mid-February uh, or I mean mid-January that that was not the case, that the reports were having difficulty in printing. So if your team told you that, um, that was true, but that's a bug that has been since resolved and those are available now in Achieve. All right, thank you. Alicia, I'll and add to that as well. Yeah, because yeah that's sure. Actually, something new for early access is that we will also, for families, they will be able to see progress reports as well as if um, the early interventionist leads a family intervention plan, for example, that that will also be available and accessible for families to to be able to see that. So that would be a new feature that wouldn't necessarily have been accessible in in our legacy system for early intervention. Okay, thank you for sharing that, Dee. Um, another question came in from a parent. What if um, this information has not been shared out with me at my school? So I, I'm assuming in relation to the family portal, because I think as IEPs and IFSPs are coming due, that's kind of seems to be in my experience when families are learning a little bit more about the ACHIEVE system. Sure, and it is, um, it, it's definitely likely that schools have not shared a lot of information yet about the portal because they don't have it, um, quite frankly. So like it, it, it has just been in the um, beginning stages of actually developing those wireframes and specifications to even build it. And so, um, you know, school, some schools may be mentioning to families that um, there's a family portal coming but they wouldn't have any detail to share yet of like when or what it's going to look like or how you'll access it. Like any of those like details, that's really what's in the works right now and um, will be shared with schools for the purpose of sharing with families. And so don't, you know, just, just be patient and hang in there because it's coming. And that's the stuff that um, we'll be sharing with AEA staff and um, our school staff in order to get that information out to parents. But they, um, the schools don't have that information yet. Okay, perfect. And I think you've already kind of answered this earlier and then, but I'll just have you kind of close out with this last thought sure. um, that segues nicely from that previous question. Somebody wrote, I'm curious how that information was going to be shared out with families. So if you could just reiterate, maybe both of you in IFSP world and IEP world, how we anticipate the information will be shared with families once that time comes. Sure. And I will say that um, a little of that is yet to be determined. I mean, we're still working on like various avenues and thinking through so that we can make sure that we are really reaching families in a variety of ways. And so some of that is still like, um, we're still exploring that and it's and it is yet to be determined for sure all of the different ways we're going to do that. But one thing that we know for sure is that as we have like resources, tutorials, training opportunities, learning materials around the portal, we will share them widely with, you know, via our um, AEA staff, our early access providers, our um, 
family engagement partners and partnerships are agencies such as ASK and others that, um, you know, communicate a lot with families. And so we plan to have a really wide breadth of um, sources for the information that we will have available so that families can access it in a, a variety of ways. For sure, though, that person that's the sort of central case manager for your child so like whether that be your service coordinator for early access services or your um, like the IEP facilitator, the, the, the teacher or provider that is really the one that connects with you a lot to schedule meetings, that, that is sort of the what we would call the case manager or facilitator of your child's case. Um, they're going to have a lot of information to share out with families. And so um, and they're going to be helping you with um understanding when and how you can have access to the portal, depending on, um, because one thing I can tell you um, now is that the portal is not available for families until the learner is um, determined eligible for services. So when you're in that stage of deciding and determining eligibility, um, that is the portal does not come into play until we, the team, you, you know, parents being a part of that team, determine that they are eligible for to receive either early intervention or special education services. And that's at that time then when you would be invited into the portal. Thank you for clarifying that point too. All right, I think that is all of our questions. So thank you again, Amy and Dee, for joining us today and providing those, this information. And we look forward to more information to come. Um, I would offer again, um, go ahead and check out on our website. Um, it should be posted soon, registration open soon rather, um, for our Together We Can conference. I, we'd love to have you there and have you join us. Um, also, if you could remember to please fill out the survey that will be coming um, and then just remember that we will also be sending the PowerPoint along with the recording of this. Um, so thank you again, and we hope you have a great rest of your Monday.